Hey everyone, JB here and welcome back to Trails in the Sky. In the previous episode, we were introduced to Estelle and Joshua, the Bracer Guild, the background of the story, and we were given a mission in order to become Bracers. So we're in the Roland Sewers and we're just going to go forward. Wait a minute, Estelle. There appears to be a recovery point over there, so we should use it if our HP or EP become low. Orbit charging stations are recovery points set up in dangerous areas. As a recovery point is approached, a exclamation mark will appear and two choices will be displayed by pressing the X button by selecting the rest option. All HP and EP will be restored. The other ones just leave and that does nothing. Sounds like a plan to me. Indeed, indeed. In fact, we're going to use it because when we unlocked Estelle's slot, we didn't get all our VP back. So there we go. Monsters at 12 o'clock. Be careful not to let them take advantage of your blind side. Yeah, there are preemptive strikes and surprise attacks in this game, and they're absolutely vital. Genuinely. Like preemptive strikes make your life so much easier. Monsters can't be seen from far away. They will be they will become visible as you approach them. The conditions at the start of a battle will change depending on how a monster is engaged. Engaging an enemy from behind is advantageous, while being attacked by an enemy from behind is disadvantageous. Yeah, but preemptive strikes will help you th just throughout the game. Surprise attacks aren't that big a deal, to be honest. Okay, battle order bar indicates who attacks first. It starts from the top and moves down. So yeah, it's like uh, Final Fantasy X with the conditional time battle system. It's very similar. So all we can do for now is attack, attack an enemy. Yeah, the highlighted area indicates the distance a character can move. Selecting a target in this area will move the character to attack. Joshua has a range of one, but Estelle with her bow staff has a range of two. That does not change throughout the game. Targets out of range are marked with the icon. Selecting an out of range target will just move the character as close as as close to it as possible, but not but no attack will be performed. I'll show that off now. So Joshua can either attack there or try and attack him and move as close to him as possible instead. We're just gonna attack here. And that guy's doing nothing. So yeah, as you can see. The reason why Joshua is getting more turns is because we put in that action one quartz earlier. And since this is just a tutorial <laughs> battle, they're just gonna stand still and do nothing. That's that then. Let's move out. That is the only voice acting in this game. <laughs> the only voice acting in this game are in the battles themselves. Not a lot. Okay. Those monsters were a lot easier than I expected. Let's keep this winning streak alive, Joshua. Yeah, the winning streak of one. Hold up, Estelle. Let's write down the info for those monsters we just fought in our guide before we do anything else. Whoops, forgot about that. Good call, Joshua. Scrubbers and guide. Okay, we're good to go. Information about opponents fought in battle will be automatically recorded in the monster guide. In addition, this information will change depending on whether victory was achieved or the party fled. That's right, so if you go press triangle and then right, you get to the monster guide and you can see the dirty rat. Doesn't look much like a rat to me, but uh, that is a rat, apparently. Here comes some more. Depending on the enemy, some physical attacks may be ineffective. Let's use arts, not physical attacks. Yeah. Okay. Arts are effective on enemies that are good at avoiding physical attacks, like these guys here. Arts also make long range attacks possible, but they require time to be cast. EP is consumed when arts are used. EP can be recovered by resting in inns, hotels, or by using charge stations, like the one we just used, or other items like an EP charge. Don't really get access to EP charges until later. Okay. Arts are effective against foes, which is difficult to hit with a weapon or those on which physical attacks have little effect. It takes time before arts can be cast. Also, EP is consumed when arts are cast. The upside to this is that arts do a ridiculous amount of damage. 
So we've got Tear, which heals, and then Aqua Bleed and Fireball, which is the same thing, just for water and fire, respectively. Uh, so, you can go through with these. You can press the square button, you can look at details. So, Moth Cluster has 8 HP. 8 HP. Joshua also has some arts, thanks to the action one course put on him. Just Soul Blur. No element, but just does damage. And a 20% chance of uh, fainting. Easy stuff. Piece of cake. And obviously when you defeat monsters, uh, they can drop some things like food, but we'll get to food later. Um, if you're ever unsure as to what something does or what a state, exactly a state effect does, you can always check in your bracer notebook. This is like the Bible. It's got everything. It's got various magics you can use. It's got all the quartz in the game. Uh, it's got a description of augments and magic setup, skills as well, how to use crafts, everything. Um, so yeah, as you can see, for example, faint, you miss your turn. Simple stuff. Estelle, let's try using crafts this time around. Since crafts have other effects besides just dealing out damage, they're worth a shot. Mainly dealing out damage. Watch that! Crafts have range limits but can be utilised instantly. CP is gained by dealing out or receiving damage during battle. That's right, so whilst arts have no... Uh, have any range, crafts do have range. And they're character specific... Yeah, character specific as well. Uh, crafts are character specific skills which not only de deal out damage but also have a broad range of effects. Using crafts consumes CP. CP is gradually gained by dealing out or receiving damage during battle. So, we could use morale but we're not going to. So yeah, dirty rat. Well, what we're going to do instead is use Joshua's craft, Jewel Strike, on this guy. not bad not bad at all Estelle and Joshua are gonna be in your party for pretty much the entire game there's one exception but they're gonna be in your party for the entire That's game and Joshua's going Let's to be out. the melee attacker and Estelle's going to be really sort of the more supportive role because she's very flexible because her orban can take any quartz uh, you could go down here and receive a reviving bomb reviving bombs very simple, they revive. A salve which causes KO and heals 100 hit points. That's not a lot later on in the game. Trust me. Again, we could also go down here, but there's nothing there. Oh, what a surprise. Another creepy thing. I wish there were an easy way to take care of them. One blow using an S-Craft or S-Break should do the trick for just about any enemy. The catch is, our CP has to be at least 100 to pull off one of these moves. These devastating attacks can only be unleashed when the CP gauge is above 100. S-breaks are actions which allow S-crafts to be immediately unleashed while ignoring the battle order. S-crafts are ridiculous. I highly suggest you save them for bosses and very, very sticky situations. S-crafts, which, which are unleashed as S-breaks, can be changed by going to tactics and then set S-break within the main menu. So if it's your turn, you can use any S-craft you want as long as you're above 100. If it's not your turn, you can set one of your S-crafts as an S-break and use it. Um, you'll have one, only one anyway, for the majority of the game. Later on, you'll get a second one and then you can choose between two. Again, just like normal crafts, they are character specific. Okay. So... We're at 98 CP on both, that's automatic. If we attack like this, we get to 102 on the stealth. So yeah, I've read through that. So basically at any point you could press left or right to bring up to get to bring up an S break if they're available, as you can see by the glowing indicator. Now press that and try unleashing an S break. Press the left or right button to select it and the X button to unleash it. 
There's another way you can do it as well. Um, with, by using the triangle button and left, up, right or down. But I don't really use that. We'll use it on a full health one. And as you can see, 195 damage. And you can see now why I'm saying you should only use these for bosses and very simple situations. So yeah. Pressed right, chose Joshua's, and went for an escape. They both basically do the same thing, their first one. Their second one do something different. Joshua's second S break is the best S break in the game. But we won't get that till much later on. Finally, you could go down here, but there's nothing there. So instead, we're just going to talk to this guy. I say talk. So that's the treasure chest we're after, huh? If we've made it this far, the rest is going to be a piece of cake. Seems like we've got a little breathing room at least. Let's pay close attention to our battle order this time. There should be a number of ways to get more mileage out of our actions. During battle, there are several bonuses which can be allotted to turns. This is what sort of sets um, Trails in the Sky apart from other RPGs in terms of their battle system. Turn bonuses have the same effect regardless of whether they are allotted to an ally or foe. Using S breaks to ignore the battle order makes it easy to jump in and strip an enemy of their turn bonus. So for example, if you saved Josh's S craft from the previous battle, it would be available here. But I didn't. These icons, so it's the icons on the right hand side. These icons are to get bonuses allotted to the battle order. If a bonus icon appears next to a character's icon, they will receive that bonus. So the battle order bar and the battle order bonus work separately. It's just that if you're in line with the battle order bonus when it's your turn, you get that bonus. So you've got heal HP, separate up, indicates the effect of each icon. A blue heart would be for EP and a and the green heart will be for CP, but you very, 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 very rarely see those. So, first thing we're going to do is take out the moth clusters. Yeah. So as you see, the moth cluster had that 10 HP, so he healed 10% of his HP. That's what the 10 means. There we go. Soul Blow will take care of one. Firebolt will take care of the other. So, see, Joshua is over an HP heal, so he gets 10% of his HP back. Uh, we don't have access to any crafts. Uh, let's see. 80, yeah. So if we use an art, soul blur, should deal 80. <laughs> yeah, 102, there we go. Yeah, these guys can hit. It's like a mini boss, really. Okay, and then soul blur. And that's it. This one's slightly more resistant to magic. That's right. So in this game, there are enemies that have the same name, but are slightly different. So for example, this dirty rat is different from the other two dirty rats. In your monster book, you will get a separate entry for each type of that particular monster you see. And there we go. Even more Sepith. Yay! And monster horns and monster bones. Believe it or not, those are also for monster recipes. Found small box times two. Hmm, that's weird. There's a couple of boxes inside the treasure chest. The fact that there's not just one, but two is kind of interesting too. Wonder what's inside. Don't look. Remember Estelle, our mission is to search and retrieve only. I'm pretty sure looking inside those boxes doesn't fall under our mission objective. You're no fun at all, Joshua. 
This has nothing to do with our mission. It's what I like to call good, honest curiosity. You know, we're the only ones down here. We could get away with a teensy ween CP, correct? No, you can't. If you feel like flunking today's test, then by all means, be my guest. Did you just say the F word? Yup, opening one of those boxes could result in an automatic fail for the both of us. If this were a real job, the contents of those boxes would belong to the client. And as long as they were nothing illegal, we would have no right to open them. I know you're right, Joshua, but I just can't help myself. If you absolutely have to know what's inside, why not ask Miss Cheryl when we get back? But for now, we need to focus on getting out of here. Alright, alright. So, yeah, just focus on getting out of here. Da, da, da. I love the music to this game, by the way. So, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rest here and then I'll meet you back outside the sewers. Good work, you two. As a rule of training, I'm going to need to confirm the items in your possession and hand it over a small box times two. Yeah, they're the real deal, all right. I don't see any evidence of tampering either. That was a close one. I figured you would try and set us up like that. Congratulations to the both of you. You have successfully passed your qualification test. You didn't really think something like simple would be a problem for us, did you? So, uh, Shara, what's in those boxes you had that you had us get? That's for me to know and for you to find out after your training is finished. That's enough chit chat for now, so let's get back to work. You two still have some things left to do. Seriously? But didn't you just say that we passed the test? You still have to learn how to report the results of your work. I'm aware that you're both tired, but this is no time to shirk your duties. Let's get back to the guild. When is this day going to be over? Oh well, no sense in giving up when the finish line's in sight. Agreed. It seems like we're within our reaching distance with we're within reaching distance of our goal. Man Joshua, are you something over your words today? Back to the race guild then. Your final training is how to report to the guild. Whenever you finish the job, it is your duty to report the results of your work to the guild. Reporting how you resolved the situation and the steps you took to get there is there are all part of your job as a bracer. You can report your results to the front desk in each guild branch. And as you already know by now, Ina is in charge here at the Roland branch. In addition, this is where you'll be paid for your work. I look forward to seeing great things from the both of you. Now that we're here, why don't you go ahead and report the results of today's training. Upon approaching the counter, a talk mark will appear. Pressing the X button will display a list of options that you report to report to the guild. Easy stuff. So I will report to the guild. Right now. Report. Receive payment for train training retrieval. Get 500 mirror and BP. A word of warning. Mir mir uh, reporting in your results is the only way to get mirror in this game. Apart from Sepith, which we're not going to trade. So, completing quests and handing them into the Brace Guild is the only way you can earn Mira. You can sell your equipment as well once you've done with it, but the natural way is to, is Mira. You don't get any money from defeating monsters in battle. Good job, you two. It seems that like you were able to complete your objective without running into any major problems. Another thing to take note of is that depending on how you handle the job, you may see an increase or decrease in the amount of pay you receive. That's right. So you, not necessarily in the mirror, although occasionally you will get more mirror, but you'll get more bracer points at times depending on the options you choose or how you choose to go about how how you go about a mission. When those sorts of opportunities arise, I'll let you know and tell you what to do. Whenever you report the results of your work to the guild, pay in the form of mirror isn't the only thing you will receive. You'll also accumulate points which are known as bracer points. BP are an indication of your achievements as a bracer. And in this game, we are going for all the BP. That's 368. When these points exceed a certain value, you will advance in rank as a bracer and be awarded with a piece of special equipment by the guild. The ranks of a junior bracer start at 9 and go all the way up to 1. Please set your sights on making first rank and work hard. In Trails of the Sky 2nd chapter, you become a senior bracer and it goes from G to A. So numbers for juniors, letters for seniors. The amount of mirror and BP received will also be recorded in your bracer notebooks. So please have a look sometime later on. All that's left to do now is finalise your training. Let's head back upstairs, shall we? I'll talk to you later, Ina, and sorry about putting more work on your plate than usual. 
Don't worry about it. Training you brace is important for the future of the guild. I fully intend to work these two to the bone in any case. To, to, to the bone? And knowing Shara is to involve the whip. Yeah, Shara's weapon is a whip. She likes to whip people into shape. Let me say it again. Good work, you two. You have now officially completed the entire training course. From now on, you will be learning from your own real, real world experience. Well then, Sherazard holds out two small boxes. Are those the boxes the ones? In answer to your question, yes, these are the boxes you retrieved during today's test. You seem awfully curious to find out what's inside the still. Are you saying it's okay if we open them? That's right. Why don't the both of you have a look and see what's inside? Sweet. All right, let's have a look. Estelle and Joshua open the boxes. Received Junior Bracer Emblem. Get in. This crest is... So this is, does this mean that we're... <clears throat> Estelle Bright, Joshua Bright, always in that order. Beginning this day at 1500 hours, you are both hereby appointed as Junior Bracers within the Bracer Guild. From here on, you will work as members of the Bracer Guild to support the livelihood of those around you, defend peace and uphold justice. Congratulations you two and welcome into the fold. Did you hear that, Joshua? We've become members of the Bracer Guild. So I'm a Bracer now, huh? I think the realisation is only now just beginning to sink in. Come on, Joshua. You should be jumping for joy running around and screaming at the top of your lungs like this. Looks us now, world. We did it. We're on top of the world. I, I was happy until he made my eardrums bleed. I hate to interrupt the celebrations, Estelle, but I need to take off now. I have some backed up work that needs my immediate attention. We understand you've been spending a lot of extra hours working with us during this busy time for the guild. Before you head out, Shara, I just wanted to say thanks. Likewise, I appreciate all the trouble you've gone through for us, Shara. Don't mention it. Training your recruits is one of, the, one of Embrace's many duties. Believe it or not, I was once in your shoes for a long time. Once in your shoes a long time ago when your father, Cassius, trained me. So that's why you have so much respect for my dad, huh? There's actually more to it than that, but I'll save that conversation for another day. There's a lot more to it. As for the both of you, work hard to become full fed bracers early on. So you can help guide those two recruits who come after yourselves. And in time, I hope to see you both become respectable bracers like your father. Anyway, I'll leave you with that thought. Yeah, Estelle does really not understand how, what a big deal her dad is. And you'll find out throughout the game. Um, I just don't get it. Get what? This is Sherazard, aka the Silver Streak, one of the most skilled young bracers we're talking about. So why is it that she holds dad in such high esteem? He just seems like nothing more than no good middle-aged man who is always out doing who knows what instead of being a father. Wow, daddy issues. A no good middle-aged man, huh? From your viewpoint, it doesn't come as a surprise that you would see him in that fashion. Huh? Never mind. Let's hurry and head home. We should let dad know that we qualified as junior bracers. Right. And with that, we are now junior bracers. Yeah! I'm going to leave it here. In the next episode, we're going to go back to see Cassius. Cassius, sorry. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe for more. Check out my channel as well to see, to look at my other videos. In the meantime, though, I've been JB. This has been Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. And I'll see you in the next one.